Imagine flying 30,000 feet above sea level in one of the United States Air Force's most technically advanced aircraft with systems able to detect missiles long before they are launched. And all of a sudden, your machines are screaming at you, about ready to be hit by a surface-to-air missile. This is where Lieutenant Colonel Gene Hamilton found himself on April 2nd, 1972, three days after the start of the Easter Offensive in Vietnam. This is the story of how Gene Hamilton spent 11 and a half days behind enemy lines. This is the story of one of the greatest rescue attempts of one man, five planes, 11 casualties, and two prisoners of war, all to rescue one lieutenant colonel. On April 2nd, 1972, Gene Hamilton was 30,000 feet in the air when all of a sudden his equipment started screaming at him that his plane was about to be shot down by a surface-to-air missile. How could this be? They had some of the best technology in the world. They were supposed to be given enough advance notice that the pilot could evade this missile. But for some reason, they didn't get the warning. And the reason they didn't get the warning is because the Vietnamese had come up with a new tactic. A new tactic that allowed them to cut down the gap of time that it took before the military, the pilots were aware that the missile was coming. And Bat-21 was one of their first victims. No sooner had the missile struck Bat-21 then Gene Hackman hit the ejection seat and was shot off into the atmosphere. He tumbled head over heels and eventually his chute opened up far above the Viet Vietnamese jungle. What he did not know is that three days earlier, on March 30th, 1972, the Easter Offensive had begun. North Vietnam was attacking and they had tens of thousands of troops on the air, in the area that Lieutenant Colonel Gene Hamilton was about to land. This offensive was so fresh that while the front lines knew that something was going on, the intelligence specialists had yet not yet fully figured out what was going on. So no sooner had Hamilton hit the ground than it, the word went out, we got a flyer down, we got to go rescue him. Helicopters were called, planes were called, and they headed out to go do a routine rescue of Hamilton. Unfortunately, because of the Easter Offensive, the North Vietnamese had a lot more ammunition on the ground surrounding Hamilton, and they started to shoot at all the Air Force equipment that was coming their direction. Over the course of the next couple days, as the Air Force again and again and again tried to rescue Gene Hamilton, 11 airmen lost their lives. Five planes were shot down. And there were two additional prisoners of war. It soon became clear to the Air Force that they were not going to be able to come and rescue Gene Hamilton. In this book, Saving Bravo, a plan was devised on how to rescue Hamilton. Hamilton was going to have to hike out. He was going to have to hike through enemy lines to be rescued. But the problem is his walkie-talkie could be heard by the North Vietnamese. A secret code had to be devised that only Hamilton knew. So they started talking to his friends and his family and they found out that Hamilton liked golf. In fact, not only did he like golf, he memorized courses. And he would know the direction that you, you were uh, shooting and the lengths of the tees. 
And so they devised a code system in which when they told him it, it was time for him to hike out of there, they basically said, we need you to play nine holes of golf. And the first hole of golf is the first hole at, and they name a resort. And Hamilton would stop and think, and it took him a little bit to figure out the code, but he eventually figured out, ah, 460 yards south by southeast. He'd looked at his compass, he'd walked that direct that distance, measuring his stride as he walked. And then they would say, oh, you need to play hole six at Augusta. Or you need to go play hole three at whatever. For nine holes, he walked through the enemy lines. And he eventually hit the river. But the river was only half of his journey. Once he got to the river, he had to make his way down that river. He was running out of fresh water. He was running out of food. He was malnutritious. He's running out of energy. And it, the Air Force eventually got to the point where they did not think he was going to make it. And that's when a Navy SEAL, Tommy Norris, who was commanded to only go 500 yards from his forward operating base, broke those orders with a South Vietnamese guide and set out to go rescue Gene Hamilton. Saving Bravo is that story. This is a well-researched, well-documented book. Uh, a couple other people have written about this story. In fact, Gene Hackman actually made a movie called Bat 21 about this story. I highly encourage you to read Saving Bravo. Vietnam War may have been an unpopular war. But Saving Bravo is a great story about how one man survived behind enemy lines and about how another man went above and beyond the call of duty in order to rescue an airman. Mm -hmm.